In this tutorial, we're going to go through Grasshopper user interface within Rhino Server 6. And we're going to cover some of the most relevant Grasshopper features, um, especially for be relevant for uh, beginners. So let's get started. When you open Rhino 6 file, and uh, by default, you would have a horizontal toolbar set on top of your viewport window. So under the tab standard at the very end, you would see an icon representing Grasshopper. So let's click it and you can see Grasshopper window opening, loading. And here it is. It's now active. Um, if it's an uh, empty um, file that you're opening just like that, you would have some just suggestions for example files. And here I have my recently opened files that I have been working with. Some of them are missing, the red ones are missing, and the green ones are still there. But if I remember it correctly, you would have here those example files if you have no history files from Grasshopper. So just to practice it, let's go to menu bar. So similar to Windows. I'm not sure how it would work in um, uh, on Mac, but I hope you can guys sort it out. So just make sure that the menu that you're you're selecting is actual Grasshopper menu, not the Rhino. So let's go to File and uh, just create a new empty document. As I create this new document, I see here this um, title unnamed opened. If I click there. So this is, if I click on that title, it shows me uh, Grasshopper files that are currently related to this Rhino file. So Rhino file, as you work on something on your project, Rhino file can actually have several Grasshopper files related to the current workflow. So the active one would be the one which is open. So if we go to help and just go to tutorial files and let's just uh, um, choose the simple input and mass, the first one, just to show you that now they're both, we have two open files. They're both unnamed because we haven't named any of these. Let's go again to the main menu bar, help, and select another example file. But let's choose number six, adaptive pattern within shape. So as you open this file, this number number six help file, now you can see some something is happening. There's a there's a definition here, and you can also see the preview in Rhino. And uh, since I have been manipulating the view quite a bit, let's, I'm manipulating it by scrolling my uh, mouse wheel, just zooming in and out, and uh, panning by right clicking. On canvas and with the left click I select so I could select something let's go back to the upper right corner and click on name once again and now this so as you can see it's quite messy right now so we have three different files uh, that are named the same so it would be better to uh, save it under some some name so that we have different ones and they are all now related to this particular rhino file so let's do that let's save the file i would go to file so again menu so it's just usual uh, windows menu and go to save document and i have some desktop opened and i will write gh 101 interface. It is important to save uh, the file as you start working, and I advise doing that because Grasshopper creates backup files if you have saved the file. It doesn't do it otherwise. In the main menu bar, Grasshopper menu bar, under File, references and then files 
you can see some of the autosave options. So you can enable or disable autosave. You can set some other options if you'd like to. And then over here, if you click here, you would see your location of the, your backup files. So the grasshopper slash autosave folder would open. You can find your files. So since we have that covered now, let's talk a bit more about manipulating the grasshopper window. If you want to minimize the window, the quickest way is just to double click on the loose title bar. So it's like that. Left double click and you can just move it around. For me personally, the most convenient way of working with Grasshopper and uh, within Rhino is just dragging it on the side of my uh, display. Um, you can also manipulate the Grasshopper window with uh, these usual Windows uh, commands on the right upper corner. So maximize, minimize, and close. So we can close. Let's open it again. And it's Again, as you see now, when we have uh, named our file, you can see that just the last uh, active file is open. So now let's maximize the grasshopper window. And let's go through uh, the, the main menu bar. So main menu bar is the most upper bar um, right below the title, the uh, file title. And it has uh, the tabs like file, edit, view, display, solution, and help. And these are so sort of usual Windows menus, right? Um, so file provides typical functions in, in addition to utility tools. Um, edit also has just like paste, cut, copy, arrange. We have some, um, some specified uh, options over here that, that we we're going to talk later on. View, display, solutions, and also help. Uh, solutions is, um, is, is, is more related to managing attributes about how the solver, uh, the grasshopper solver computes the, the solution. So uh, disable the, this uh, computation, disabling sol solver, recomputing, re and so on. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, a lot about the, the display part also. So next, let's talk about component palettes. And these are over here. So these are specific to Grasshopper. And um, you, depending, so, so these components, some of them are default. Uh, and many of them uh, can be downloaded. So here, you can see icons uh, under the tab. You go through the tab, you can see icons. But these are just some icons. So here, it's only a limited amount of um, icons uh, that are displayed. So actually, if you want to see more, you have to click on this uh, black lower tab or on the small, small arrow or on this tab. And then you can see the actual amount of uh, objects or user objects that could be accessed. And it's everywhere. Maybe here it's uh, not that many, but if we go to sets, you can see that it expands quite a bit. So there are quite, only here under the tree, you would see only four, right? By default, well, there are actually a lot of them. So the height of the component paths can be adjusted. If you hover your mouse over, uh, over this line, you would see the icon change, showing you that this height can be adjusted. But, uh, and again, maybe for some, it's more convenient than others. We do, however, for some reason, uh, would like to see all the components, all the hidden components. You would have to go to the main menu bar under view. And here you can you have some options to manage a user interface, um, grasshopper user interface. 
um, you can let's say turn off component types altogether. We don't want to do that. And you can choose to obscure components to show obscure components. And then you would have uh, loads of components. So maybe if you want to see all of them, then it makes sense to make the the component added height uh, greater just to fit all of those uh, all of these icons. We're just gonna stick to the default view. So next, um, we have components, and let's say we want to get it out onto canvas. So we pick one. I was gonna pick under params and input, and I will choose panel. I will click on it on the icon, click and drag onto canvas, and I have my uh, component here. You can also open it here. Just um, left click on the black bar. And if you want to have a short description about the component, you just need to hover over the icon. Just explaining the name again so they're not too explicit. So now let's talk about the canvas. So we had menu, main menu bar, we have a component palettes over here. And then we have canvas. And this bar over here is actually canvas toolbar, which I'm going to touch upon a bit later. So canvas is the main space where you construct your uh, visual program. And um, there's some functions that you can uh, do on canvas as well. First, instead of going through component palettes and searching for your for the component that you like, if you know what component you are going to use, it might be faster for you just to double click on canvas and just call the pro uh, call the component that you're going to use using a keyword search. So let's say I'm going to use point and when I'm typing in, it gives me some uh, suggestions. And these first ones, the closest ones to the to the text, to, to the this text bar, are the most common ones. So the one I want to use, let's say construct. And now I can see there's construct date, construct mesh, construct path, and construct point. Let's choose this one. Let's choose this component. So again, just double click on canvas and type in what you what you want to search. It it is problematic though at the beginning since you're not uh, you don't know the, all the components and I really advise you to go through component balance uh, when you're searching for a particular component by right clicking on your canvas uh, and there's this small dialog box like menu box and at the very bottom you can find you can find find uh, option let's choose that one and so here find uh, option allows you to search for a particular component within your script so it search for the component which is already on canvas not inside the panels, uh, palettes, the component palettes, but on canvas. So it's an, a component that's actually being used within your, um, within your script, within your algorithm. So let's try to find the one that I know, which is here for the visual purposes. And it's, I only wrote path, uh, PA panel, and then it's already there, right? So it shows me. That is this one. So maybe this, uh, just because I want to go through all these options right now, um, although we don't have the script. Uh, but let's go to our upper right corner and just go to one of our open uh, scripts. Right click on canvas, select find, and then just type in B. So there's some B 
in all of these. O, so it's more, uh, um, more refined, right? And then with box, right? So this one is a bounding box. So it's a minimum and maximum values. Um, I'm not sure why the join curves is here, but it is. And then there's just this bounding box. So, and you have it in box corners, obviously. So you have it here, right? Like a list of uh, components that have um, the, the name that you have been searching for. Okay, let's go back to our work file, which is quite empty right now. The last uh, part here on Canvas uh, I would like to show to you is the radio user interface. So if you click your mouse wheel on Canvas, you would have this quick uh, pop-up radio menu with some functions. So when I some of these functions currently in gray in grayscale are related to components that should be selected when activating this menu. And there's some functions which are related to canvas. I'm not going to go through all of them. We already went through find. There's just a disable solver, recompute. We'll, we'll touch upon these later on. And then if you select the component, when you select the component, it turns green. And you click the, click the wheel, mouse wheel, you will have now all the icons in color, uh, which means that these are all the options that you can choose from. Another feature I'd like to introduce you with, with relation to Canvas, is drag and drop. So one way to open Grasshopper file, you can go to File, and next to New Document, you can just open Document or search through Recent Files. You can also access it here on the Canvas toolbar, but then you can also just select, drag, and drop the, the Grasshopper file here. And as you do that, you have um, some options of how you actually wanna how you actually wanna open these files. So there's just open, just open as it is, the simple one, the green one that we always have. There's some other options just like insert files. So it actually uh, merges this script from this new file that I would like to open with, the, our, my, with my current script. So it just puts it in. The one one is group files. So after opening, it just groups files. Uh, so it creates a group of files. And the cluster files, uh, we will touch upon it later. Uh, so you can just immediately create a cluster from your script when opening it. And then examine files. Uh, so if I remember this correctly, it would not run it. Uh, yeah, it just shows if everything is okay and shows some options. It shows some uh, so it shows the objects that are inside, and this is more analytical preview, not so much for the beginners though. But what is useful for you could be inserting files and let's say group. Let's choose grouping file. So, okay, this is a bit of a huge script. So it it merges with my currently open GH101 interface file. It, it automatically puts it in a, in a group. So it's very convenient if you merge more than one. Let's, uh, let's select the group and the components. So just from right to left, dragging like that and deleting it. There's some text. We are gonna continue talking about Grasshopper interface in the next tutorial.